My name is Pi Jakobsson. I'm a sex worker since 21 years. I'm also a sex worker activist for 15 years. Politically correct, in my opinion, is sex work. First of all, because sex work is an inclusive term. It includes everybody in the sex industry. And I don't like exclusive terms, because some people working as prostitutes will identify as prostitutes. Some people only working with domination stuff will identify something else. Women working indoors will identify as escorts. There are so many words. Everything comes back to radical feminism, you know. In all countries you have radical feminists. In Sweden, radical feminism is the norm. And, you know, I mean, if you really go way back in radical feminism, you know, they say that any penetration is like rape. Now, I mean, it actually says in, in, in the context of the law, it says that uh, no prostitution is prostitution out of free will. Right? It means that everybody is a victim. If you scream and shout that you're not a victim, you're suffering from a false consciousness. And if you try to convince them that you're not even suffering from a false consciousness, they will say, well, you're not representative. And the fact is that I'm very representative. I'm like middle-aged, Swedish, working indoors, which is a very typical Swedish sex worker. And the fact of the matter is that most people in the sex industry choose it for whatever reason. And, you know, it, it maybe suits their purposes, the way of living, or the money, or what, for whatever reason. And then you will also get, you know, especially here in Sweden, people will like challenge you and say, so what's a free choice? Yeah, but, you know, ask, you know, someone working as an assistant in a hospital, working with old people, cleaning shit the whole day, so if that was a free choice, she probably wanted to pay her rent. You know, there are a lot of, you know, occupations that we take because we need to survive. The law says that it's illegal to, pur to purchase or get oneself a temporary sexual service. There are like several problems with that, with the law that they had to correct. Because first of all, what's a temporary sexual service? Because many people working have regular clients, you know. Some people have clients they've been having for 20 years. They outlasted like several marriages. So what's temporary? But then they decided that each time you pay is a temporary time, right? And then they had to decide what's a sexual service and they had some problems with that also because they wanted to include like private posing and striptease and porn films but they couldn't so in the end they decided that if one person touched the other person's genitals. And then it's also in exchange for, you know, for something which could be money, which could also be drugs, of course. And because alcohol is considered a drug, it's also in exchange for alcohol which means that basically every one night stand in Stockholm is probably a crime, if you would look at it that way. Um, and, I mean, so, so the whole concept of the law is very, very uh, weird. I mean, it's not very functional. And also, when they sent the proposition for the law out on consultation, 98 out of, out of 100 came back and said no, especially all the legal system, because they said this law is going to be completely impossible to implement. We're not going to be able to use it. Uh, but they didn't care, they just went ahead anyway. And, you know, if, if you are accused of this law and sentenced, you will get uh, up to, you will get a fine or up to six months in jail. Well, I mean, for most, most people I know that are like, like me, like, you know, th between 30 and 40, indoor workers, Swedish, the law has been like, good in some ways because you know we can charge more because the clients feel they are more safe if they go to Swedish workers than foreign workers right um, but the stereotype of, of sex workers is even worse and suddenly because the whole Swedish population is so aware of that all people well women we only talk about women even though there are loads of men selling sex but all women in sex work are victims so now if they suspect that a neighbor is selling sex, they will like good citizens call the police and just tell them about it, you know, which means that the woman will lose her apartment. Because the landlord is obliged to throw her out, otherwise he will get charged of pimping. So, uh, and, and also, I mean, there are uh, numbers of cases where, where sex workers, and I'm not even talking about, you know, people working in prostitution, also women working in striptease or in porn films, they lost their kids, they, you know, because they are unfit mothers. Not because they are sex workers, 
but because they're sex workers, they don't understand, you know, the need to stop. So you are a victim until you, you say that this is not a problem for me. And if you insist on working and insist on continuing doing this, then you are like bad and will be punished. You know, we want to save you. You don't understand. We want to save you. And, you know, if you don't appreciate it, you will be punished one way or another. We have a very weird like pimping law. There are cases with grown-up children uh, that's been accused of pimping because they've been living for free while studying with their mother. And also if two women choose to work together in an apartment, even if one is not taking money from the other, just the fact that one is, doesn't have to pay the rent all by herself, they will be charged with pimping each other. Which means that women are now working alone. Which is of course more unsafe. The more stereotyped you are, the more dehumanized you are. Very much the same as you have with, with, when it comes to drugs. You know, the whole concept of drug use in Sweden is really dehumanized. You are like an evil person potentially that will steal everything your family owns. And with sex work it's, it's as stereotyped, which means that for the clients you are also less of a person. So therefore you can be treated like you know, a non-human. So of course you become more vulnerable. Especially for the women in the street, this has been very, very bad because before they had, you know, this classic thing hanging into the car window, having the discussion, this is what I'm willing to sell, this is what I'm willing to do. They don't have the time anymore because the clients are so jumpy. So they have to get into the car, drive off and then negotiate. And then they're already in the car. Also the good client, which means the safe client, the non-dangerous clients, uh, they think, which is true, the risk of getting caught is, is bigger in the streets, which means that they turn into indoor workers, even if they prefer buying sex from outdoor workers, which left the outdoor workers with the bad clients, with the dangerous clients, which they before had an opportunity to turn down, but now they can't afford to because many of the good clients are gone. In the sex industry, there are people that are, you know, being abused, that are suffering, that are trafficking victims, etc. But, you know, the normal way for the police to find out is not from sex workers, it's from clients. Because they're, they're actually not clients or assholes, you know, there will be clients to say, oh, this doesn't look good. They will call the police. And of course, now they don't call the police anymore. Because if they're called the police, they will be accused of a crime. Yeah, well, if you talk with the police, they, they won't say that it's really reduced it. Because there are, no, there are, no, as there are no numbers prior to the law. The only numbers they have is based on street prostitution. And street prostitution in Sweden has always, the low, numbers have always been very low because it's cold, okay? We don't want to stand in the street. Even, even the United Nations CEDAW committee asked Sweden to, to uh, uh, evaluate the law, and Sweden didn't do it. Now they're doing an evaluation, but only to see how they can make the law more effective. The politicians in Sweden have decided that sex work is a social problem, right? But yet they tried to solve it with a criminal law and they did not give any money to, to social resources. So they say they want to have, well, women because the, it's a gender neutral law, but we still only talk about women. They want to have women out of prostitution, yet them, they offer them nothing. No exit programs, no specially trained social workers. Uh, they are not interested to have any contact with, you know, political sex workers, you know. It's like because Sweden always had this like self-proclaimed thing of being the perfect society, but there are two groups that really prove, prove that, you know, in their world it's not perfect, drug users and sex workers. So let's hide them. I mean, and, and even in, in the European Parliament, they did first this, this declaration on, on children's rights, that children should always be consulted in matters that concern them on an international, national and local level. And all the politicians in Sweden were like, fantastic, good, of course, you know, sign on to it. Yeah, so they did the same thing with sex workers. Oh, you know, sex workers should always be consulted in matters that concern them on an international, national and local level. And all our politicians in the European Parliament voted against it. Our Minister of Justice said in Parliament that that's against everything that Sweden stands for. Right? Which means that we give our opinions are less valued than the opinion of children which kind of says it.